we made this. We're not quite sure what to call it. Geometric picture frame, wall hanging, sculpture, we don't know really. But we're going to show you how to make it from staircase parts. So we made this prototype off camera and quite frankly it was needlessly hard to make um, and there was various problems in its design. So this failure has taught us how we can do better and the key takeaway was that we should make it out of staircase spindles because they're readily available, they're stable timber and they come in various pre-cut sizes. With a new plan, our first job was to take it into CAD and model it up. This allowed us to fix the mistakes of the previous model as well as perfect all the dimensions so that it looked just right. A task that was much easier said than done and it took a little bit of time to get everything just so. If you're interested in building this project, we have plans for sale on our website with all the steps and detailed dimensions provided. We left our cosy office to go out and brave the cold, cold workshop with an armful of spindles and not even a cup of tea. But don't worry, I will bring him one later. We think you Americans call spindles balustrades, but I'm going to keep calling them spindles just to keep life simple. You'll need some thicker and some thinner spindles for this project. And the key here is to make sure that they are square, because sometimes they come out the factory rectangular, because that fits better in the staircase world but we need them to be square, so you might need to rip them through the table saw just to ensure this. We'll start by cutting the outside perimeter from the thicker spindles. Um, we're cutting all four at once um, to ensure that they are all the exact same dimension and also it's a little bit quicker cutting them all at the same time, so pro tip, do that. We have got a lot of 45 degree cuts to make, so we're going to make sure our mitre saw is set up correctly by checking the blade angle on a test piece of scrap wood. So we cut two 45 degree cuts and then using a square and a light source, a window works perfectly for this, we take our two pieces of cut wood and marry them up against the square and the light source to make sure there's no light visible between them. As you can see here, we have a nice tight fit, so we know that our saw is indeed set to 45 degrees. We'll then take our thinner spindles, and before cutting, we find the best face and orientate the wood so that this face will be facing outwards during the glue-up phase. And with our saw accurately set to 45 degrees, it's time to start cutting. And these cuts need to be really accurate, so it's best to take your time and sneak upon your cut line. We'll start by cutting the middle square, followed by the inside square, and then finally the connector pieces. Chop, chop, choppity, chop, chop, chop. Lots of chopping. This is the best time to do any sanding, because once this frame is all glued up, those tight little angles are going to be really tough to get into. So you want to sand all your faces and break the edges, but don't sand your cut faces because all you're going to do is undo that hard work that you've just put in getting your lengths and angles just right. We learned from our previous model how important it was to mark up our centre lines. Now, this is actually really hard to convey on camera, but we go into much more detail in our plans. For example, all measurements are provided in metric and imperial and we show exactly where to mark your timber. We've spent a lot of time perfecting these plans and we're really proud of how visual and easy to follow the steps are. So if you do end up purchasing them, we would really love to hear your feedback. We're always looking to improve and if there's anything that we can do better, then we're all ears. It was then time to do a practice assembly with all our pieces. And we started with our clamping squares around the perimeter to ensure we began with a perfectly square frame. This is key. If this outside perimeter isn't square, then it's guaranteed the whole thing is going to be off. So we really need the outside perimeter to be perfectly square before moving on. And then quite simply, we worked from the outside in, starting off with our outside square, then the inside square, and finally the connectors. Inevitably, um, something will be too big, so we just want to sand that back ever so slightly. And despite best intentions, this is wood that we're dealing with, so it will have likely changed shape since cutting, so there will be a little bit of sanding to do at this phase. After the inevitable back and forth of sanding just to get all our pieces fitting perfectly, we then took the opportunity to label each piece of wood because this is going to really help us out during the glue up phase. 
The glue up phase is much like the practice assembly. Start from the outside, ensuring you have a perfectly square frame to begin with, and then work your way in methodically. The glue should be enough to hold this frame together, provided you can get enough of it in there. And really the frame isn't under a lot of stress and each connection supports each other. But if you do want a more substantial fixing, you could always pocket hole or brad nail the outside perimeter. And just remember that when you do glue to clean up while it's still wet, because it's going to be really difficult to remove later on once it's dry. We want to make sure that the front face is flush with our worktop bench. And this is where the thick and thin spindles come into their own because they create a step in the back of the frame, which is where we're going to be mounting our glass. And so to ensure that everything was flush against the worktop, um, once it was all clamped up, we then tapped all the pieces down. However, that didn't quite work out for us. With all the wax paper and all these clamps in the way, unfortunately our frame did glue up with a slight step on its front face. Now, if this does happen to you, don't panic, it's not a big deal. We'll show you how to fix it later on in the video. In case it's not obvious, our workshop is bitterly cold this time of year. So cold that glue has no chance of drying. This is definitely something that we'll have to address come the summer maybe insulate the workshop, but for now we have to figure out how to get this glue to dry. So between the two of us, we managed to navigate all these clamps into the house without taking out any of our door frames, which is an achievement in itself, I'll have you know. Um, and then she was able to dry overnight, no bother, in a nice, nice warm home. Um, but because we were inside, we forgot the cameras, so unfortunately there's no video of us taking the clamps off. But now back in the workshop, you can see here that there's a slight step in the front face where the glue has dried slightly off. But this is nothing that a bit of aggressive sanding won't solve. So if we just crack out the sander and sand that down. We're going to use Fiddy's hard wax oil to finish off this frame. Uh, we've tried various different finishes on past projects, but we keep coming back to this hard wax oil. It gives a really lovely natural finish. It's easy to apply and maintain. So for us, it was just an easy decision. And for the record, we are in no way affiliated to Fiddy's. This is just our personal opinion on the product. We have a question actually, if you find folk across the pond, we don't ever see you using fiddies and for us it's so readily available and it's a great product that we use all the time and we're just wondering why why we don't see you using it do you not have it available to you are there better products out there um please do let us know in the comments below we're, we're curious and we've been we've been sort of quizzing ourselves for for some time as to why this is um to be honest we prefer fiddies over many other options so it'd be great to know why you're not why we don't see you using it Annoyingly, it wasn't until the finish had dried that we noticed the dreaded pigtails on the wood. This was from sanding too aggressively, perhaps rushing and not working up through the grits. Either way, we weren't happy. We, we couldn't send it out the door looking like this. So in order to fix it, we, I say we, Michael. Michael sanded it all back and started again. This time, taking the time to work his way up through the grits and then reapplying the hard wax oil. The final stage is to mount the glass to the reverse of the frame. And we purchased our glass as clip frames because this was much cheaper for us than having glass cut. But you could also use acrylic here. We use a foam adhesive mounting tape to secure the glass to the frame. And we ensured the glass was evenly spaced and lined up correctly against the frame uh, before firmly pressing it into position. And so once that was locked down, we brought in the second pane of glass to lay on top and made sure all the sides were lined up. This way we could center our photo, which we mounted with some double-sided tape. We then flip that second pane over and initially we secured it using the same foam adhesive tape. However, this tape is really strong and this frame was a gift for someone, so it was always our intention to replace the photo. Annoyingly, the tape didn't budge when we tried to remove the glass and it broke. So after purchasing more glass, we then secured the second pane by taping the perimeter with masking tape, which so far works much, much better. We finally secured some picture hooks and foam pads and she is good to go to her new home. We might call this a fancy geometric picture frame wall art wedding present, but let's face it, that's not a very snappy title. We're curious, what might you search for if you were looking to build something like this? Do let us know in the comments below, we read and reply to each one. 
And if you've made it this far, then thank you so much for watching and learning with us. Uh, do help us out by hitting that like button and also please consider subscribing if you'd like to see this channel grow. We're new here and we want to show YouTube we have valuable content and your subscription would really help boost us in the right direction. So until next time, cheerio!